have Enrique Bruno, hopefully I pronounced that right, who is a chemical engineer, Vermont resident since 92, 40 years experience in basic industry, cement, aluminum, and steel productions, nine years specialized in building science in Passive House buildings, founder member of the Passive House, board chair of the Passive House organization, and certified Passive House consultant. So this will be very exciting to hear. Thank and let me, let me uh, share my screen for you. And so you guys see the passive house? Yes. Great. Okay. So you wanna, you wanna uh, move it from there then? If you take it, you what you would do is just go down below and then hit share screen. Yeah. And then just grab your screen. It's, uh, it, you need to uh, enable, because it's disabled at this point, the sharing. Yep, I did. OK. So uh, let me see. No, it's still disabled. It's uh, still disabled. Oh, it does? Let's see. How about now? Nope. All right, how about now? Because I just hit all. I think you, you have to turn uh, your, your one uh, off. Okay, now, yep. it, now it's working. Okay. Okay. There you go. We can see it. Okay, perfect. Let me change this here in just a second. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Christine and John, for giving us this opportunity to address your uh, audience uh, with this topic. My name again is Enrique Bueno, and I'm with uh, representing the Vermont Passive House uh, Organization. And uh, the topic today is uh, inform you about the uh, passive house standard. I would like to start with the problem that we were talking before, uh, buildings, operations, uh, and, and materials uh, take uh, almost 50% of the total energy that this country uses. In terms of CO2 emissions, the 2018 revision also list uh, the buildings, materials, and, and buildings operation sector as the largest uh, CO2 contributor. And uh, in, in terms of uh, our uh, situation here in the state, uh, thermal also uses 38%, which is the largest uh, piece of the pie of the total energy that the uh, state uses, and 76% of the thermal comes from fossil fuels. So between thermal and electrical due to low efficiency, here we were in Vermont, we're wasting 70 to 90% of the energy with a big carbon footprint. The Passive House principle basically uh, is moving towards simplicity. In the 20th century, uh, our buildings were very complex in mechanical systems, trying to give us comfort and uh, uh, but uh, didn't achieve it. So in the, the 21st century, the, the uh, idea is to go to passive systems or where you can you, uh, reduce or minimize, eliminate complex mechanical systems, and uh, then we reduce the overall construction and maintenance cost, which brings the cost of uh, single family, multifamily building down to com competitive market rates. Anyway, in our uh, opinion, cost uh, should not be the benchmark at this point because either way uh, we're going to pay the price uh, either in uh, and uh, in, in energy improvement uh, 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 mechanisms or uh, prices uh, uh, climate uh, uh, disaster uh, mitigation the passive house uh, concept is uh, based in five uh, basic uh, principles. Um, the first one is climate specific insulation. So because uh, every climate uh, has a different thermal uh, situations uh, for 
colder climates, we need more insulation than in, 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 in moderate climates. The second uh, principle is thermal bridge-free connection, which means that the, the uh, thermal envelope has to be continuous, and I'll uh, stop a little bit later on that uh, respect. Also, high-performance windows. Uh, the high, uh, we need here at least uh, triple-pane windows with an R value of 7, uh, preferable 10. Uh, the uh, fourth is uh, air tightness. Uh, it's very important this because 30 to 50 percent of the total uh, energy losses uh, that we have in our buildings are due to air infiltration. And the fifth uh, and the last but not least is the high efficiency heat recovery ventilation. Because since we're making our buildings very, very extremely tight, then we need the mechanical balanced ventilation, which means we are supplying the same amount of air, fresh air that we are removing from the building as stale air. And the two streams uh, convey in a heat exchanger that uh, recover the energy of uh, the inside the building. Uh, the thermal bridge effects uh, is shown in this uh, graph here. Uh, it's not only heat loss, but also mold formation because uh, thermal bridges induce cold surfaces and cold surfaces below dew point condense uh, induce condensation of the moisture that is uh, in the air and that uh, condensation produces mold formation which is a serious serious problem of uh, health uh, in our buildings. Bad construction produce sick buildings. The passive house standard benefits is the highest world uh, standard for energy efficiency performance best possible indoor air quality and comfort. These are very important for uh, human uh, productivity and health. It's a slightly high mortgage, but lower total cost of ownership, which is the main point of this. We are not taking into consideration many oh, no. cost factors when we uh, when we take uh, no that's all right i was just going to pick your brain on visas investment properties but i shot a message to deanna i think somebody has to right. uh, l uh, mute uh, there uh, it's all right <laughs> okay okay uh, the next one is a uh, great building dur durability greater building durability and lower maintenance costs which transduce in resilient to climate change while reducing investment risk. The, uh, also, owners are less likely to default and less likely to pay off their mortgage early, which equates in to financial stability for the uh, financial institutions. And best building performance in crisis situation. Buildings can coast for several days before freezing without any heat mitigating exposure to climate change, to climate risk, which is very important in our situation because we're seeing more and more uh, extreme uh, heat, uh, climate events. Uh, the benefits from the adoption of the passive house standard is the passive house standard is based on, on, on specific energy intensity performance benchmarks, which if met, you pass, if not, you fail. It's not a series of recipes that may or may not get you to a specific energy performance benchmark. The passive house standard uh, as mentioned before is well recognized in the world as the most uh, stringent performance based building standard and it can be achieved with off shelf materials here in Vermont. It is not based on generic prescription that uh, because every building performs difference depending on the on the site, on the orientation, on many aspects uh, on the shading that it has. So it, all this is considered into passive house. It allows for accountability since benchmark in the benchmarks are well defined and uh, it, uh, plans are previewed and suggestions are made. So everything is pre-certified uh, or, uh, or pre-reviewed uh, on the drawing board before construction st starts and, uh, and predictions are made on the energy consumption. So everybody knows exactly where they are going. And it requires a field uh, third uh, party verification to comply with design parameters, which is a very important factor because that uh, assures that whatever is on the drawing board is gonna be also uh, performed in the field. Lenders awareness uh, for passive house standard. 
uh, lenders must be aware that they are fi financing a special super high performance pro property type. Lender must also hire patent appraiser able to meet the following requirements. Building size must be understood. The market reactions to the building features and attribute must be measured. So the, 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 the uh, appraiser must know the building size, how buildings react, and also all the special features that they're gonna have in terms of health and comfort uh, for the occupants. The passive house appraisers challenges at this point, uh, uh, passive houses are complex appraisal assignment because um, passive houses have unique features compared to a traditional built home without uh, knowledge of construction methods and benefits to the owner. It will be difficult to, for the appraiser to appraise this special property type appropriately. Uh, databases are insufficient presently presenting uh, research challenges. Uh, most as appraisers do not have training about these special property types, so that's a problem. Uh, but there are resources. Trained appraisers, uh, trained appraisals can be found at the Appraisal Institute webpage, uh, which is listed uh, here in this link. Uh, this graph is from Efficiency Vermont uh, from uh, eight to uh, nine years ago, and they compare uh, seven houses, seven uh, single family homes, five of them were built according to the Energy Start uh, uh, benchmark. One is the passive house and another is a low load energy home, which, which was a precursor of the uh, uh, home, uh, high performing home uh, tier of Efficiency Vermont. And they came to the conclusions that an average 72% of energy usage is reduced uh, uh, with the high performance of our passive house uh, compared to Energy Start um, uh, benchmark. And in terms of default rates, uh, also there is an interesting uh, uh, paper uh, produced by Institute for Market Transformation Report, uh, and uh, it basically says that uh, on average, 32% uh, low. There is a lower risk of 32% in Energy Start homes and passive house is 70% more efficient than energy star. So you have even an increased uh, uh, pre, uh, default, uh, uh, reduction of, uh, of uh, default risk. And this graph uh, shows a snapshot also from Efficiency Vermont, uh, comparing the out-of-pocket expense monthly. As you can see, I mean, the, the mortgage may be a little bit higher, but then the utilities are much lower. And so the, the out-of-pocket expenses is equal or less with the benefit that whatever you pay on mortgage is turning into your equity, while whatever you pay in utilities is burnt in, up in the air. Uh, why constructor, uh, contractors must take the full leap? This is a very important thing because some people are taking very small leap uh, in improvements which uh, really do not take them to the point uh, where it is, should be. So if you take in consideration then increasing your tightness, uh, heat re recover ventilation system, higher uh, R values, all those uh, measure, measures increase the cost, high performance windows, but you come to a point where the ball drops and then you eliminate the conventional heating or cooling systems. And there is where the passive house uh, standard really uh, turns competitive in, in the marketplace. Baby steps will only produce new buildings that will require weatherization in the near future. And that's a, a very uh, sad catastrophe. This uh, graph also shows uh, uh, the different uh, programs of, of energy standard here in Vermont. Uh, the uh, uh, Vermont baseline, her 70 is the, is the tallest one, and the, the shortest one is the uh, passive house, which is the HERS 35. So as you can see, the passive house is 70% more efficient than energy star. And uh, the problem is that our uh, uh, stretch code, our uh, building code, uh, and specifically this uh, 2020 stretch code, which is gonna be implemented in September this year, 
is basically stuck uh, seven years behind. And it's stuck 70% uh, short from where it should be. It's uh, stuck at the energy start levels. And, you, and as you can see, uh, it's 70% uh, uh, it's less the energy start. So uh, this, is, uh, this graph also shows the staircase uh, from the DOE, the Department of Energy, for the uh, zero energy ready home uh, staircase. And as you can see, the passive house is the last step uh, that, that they considered in energy performance. Arvis has not pro progressed uh, as it should have and uh, to make things where this is not even enforced. So we're in, in discussions with the uh, Department of Public Services to see if we can speed up the whole thing because at this point the Arvis uh, 2015 stretch code uh, from uh, in 2015 to the 2020 stretch code uh, the improvement is just 15 to 20 percent in energy reduction. So uh, if we keep this pace, uh, who, who knows uh, how long it's going to take for us to really get to the passive house source zero where we should be. Uh, this is another uh, graph from the Department of Energy that uh, shows passive house is uh, consumer choice made simple. Uh, the DOE recognizes in this graph that the passive house building standard is the best customer choice and the financial institutions uh, could help uh, borrowers with that choice. Also, Efficiency Vermont considers the passive house as the uh, best uh, stretch to go uh, and it, uh, it's represented in their in incentives. The energy modeling, uh, which is a basic uh, Step for uh, passive house has a 50% modeling cost uh, uh, incentive. The thermal shell, which is very important because it uh, assures the air tightness of the building, and also the uh, certification because that involves the third party verification, which is very important. So, for a building, the, I mean, a multifamily or 30 apartment buildings, Efficiency Vermont can provide up to $19,000. In, uh, in, in incentive, which is a very good chunk of the cost of the, uh, of the process. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible here in Vermont. We have already several, many cases. And uh, this is one, uh, Elm Place in Milton. It's a senior housing uh, complex, which was uh, inaugurated in June 5th uh, by uh, 2017 by uh, Governor Scott, uh, and um, this building cost only 2% more than the, than the owner wanted to spend uh, in a less uh, uh, energy performing building. And it's uh, using 83% uh, less energy for heating and cooling than a code building. Uh, neither the architect, nor the contractor, nor the owner, nor, nor the subs have ever built a passive house building. And uh, this, they, they did it uh, perfectly well the first time. Uh, other examples here is the, this is the tallest uh, 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 on the left, you see the high rise at Cornell Tech in New York City. Uh, it's the tallest uh, passive house building in the world. And uh, you, there are also examples from a school in Portland, Maine, affordable housing in Brewer, Maine, and the affordable senior housing in Milton that I already mentioned. So the passive house standards not experimental science. It has been implemented in thousands of buildings around the world since 20, uh, 26 years ago. There is another example, the East Harlem, New York City. It's a mixed use, 655 affordable housing apartments for income uh, uh, levels of 19,000 to 106,000 a year. And it has all the other amenities of a, um, of a uh, mixed-use uh, building. Coming back to the village center apartment in Brewer, Maine, it's a 48 affordable housing. They, it was done in, in conjunction with the Maine Housing Authority. The construction cost was capped by them because they capped the uh, affordable housing uh, construction costs. It came to $135 per square feet construction cost. So. It can be competitive with market rates. And this was built with conventional double stat wall filled with cellulose. So it's not rocket science, it's no experimental science, it's a very, very well proved uh, science, building science. 
This is another excellent uh, example, the Twin Pines housing in West Lebanon, uh, designed by my clay architects of Westville, Vermont. It's a 20,000 square feet uh, apartment building. It's a net positive energy uh, uh, because it produces more energy from the solar panels that you're seeing there. And uh, at this point, net zero is no longer enough. We must uh, be net positive and carbon negative uh, because uh, every kilowatt that you generate in, in your buildings could be used uh, for transportation and mitigating the, the, the load um, of the transportation field. If Vermont architects and designers can build the net positive out of state, why can't we build them here in Vermont? And this is another great example, the Habitat for Humanities in its um, East Montpelier, uh, uh, occupied uh, two years ago, it was built by volunteers. So again, it's no uh, rocket science, no, no experimental science. And the uh, total cost of energy is a 100% um, electric home. Uh, the total cost of energy is $63 per month uh, total. So for a family, this is a great thing to budget because uh, they can have control on the cost uh, of ownership. We must stop building new structure today that will require further energy upgrades in the near future, exacerbating the already colossal change that we uh, have in Vermont, uh, weatherizing the precarious existing stock. Uh, it applies also to renovations. This is an example, the 51 Upper Pines in Warren, Vermont. Uh, it was renovated according to passive house standard and the heating demand of this building is only 7,655 kilobitus per year for a 1,400 uh, uh, square feet uh, home. And the peak load is only 5,000 BTUs. So that uh, small uh, heat pump that you see in there takes care of the whole heating and cooling of that building. And uh, it's um, even with the smallest heat pump, which is 7,000 BTU, you can achieve that. This uh, graph uh, compares uh, the 2020 stretch code with the passive house for that renovation. And the heating demand uh, is 66% uh, lower with passive house compared to the stretch code 2020, and the heating load is 63%. Reducing considerably the heating load reduces the size of heating equipment, simplifies the building, and makes it uh, uh, market price straight. So what would we have and what would we need? We have the signs uh, well proved here in Vermont. We have the craftsmanship. Uh, we have several, many uh, uh, builders that are already uh, uh, experts in passive house building. We have off-shelf materials and components. What we need is the financial incentives and lenders to recognize the benefits of a high-performing building. And with that, I uh, appreciate very much, and I'm open for questions if you have any. Yeah, I have a question. So um, you said that you need the financial incentive and lenders to recognize the benefits. Um, is it also come with the appraisers? Because it sounds like the appraisers were having a hard time finding people who can appraise, you know, energy efficient homes and do it properly. And there's not enough uh, people to have, um, you know, a comp to, because you can't really do a comp, you know, a house that's just was born, was uh, built in 1980 and then you have a new home that's energy efficient or, you know, something that has, you know, very fine craftsmanship to that type of a house, a passive house or anything. So, I mean, I also think it has to start with the appraisals too. It, uh, it is a very important component, yes. Uh, uh, one of the uh, greenest cities in the world is Vancouver, Vermont, uh, Vancouver uh, Canada. British Columbia, and uh, they have 28 uh, appraisers there in Vancouver, and 21 have taken the training for passive house. So uh, it is it is something that uh, really is uh, important that we all uh, uh, to get on on board on this. That's why we are uh, discussing the the topic with uh, the uh, Department of Public Services. 
and uh, uh, we appreciate very much this opportunity that you give us to address your your audience because uh, this is not uh, something that uh, uh, one only uh, entity can do. I mean, this has to be an, a totally integrated uh, uh, approach from the legislature, from the administration, from the uh, financial institutions, from the uh, appraisers and, uh, and us. The good thing is that we have very good qualified people and we yeah. are we are um, generating a lot of workshops uh, and, and training uh, sessions so that uh, that uh, people can get on board. But uh, we need to we need to get on board uh, much faster because at this point, uh, basically, you can build any kind of uh, structure in Vermont and get away with it. And uh, mm -hmm. and and it's a tragedy because uh, it's costing a tremendous amount of of mm -hmm. resources to the state. And, uh, and it can be done well, I mean, from, from the start on. So it's just uh, 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 making the decision to do it right from the start, from, from all, all the different uh, uh, people or, or all, all the stakeholders that are in the, in the business. Now about how many passive houses are there in Vermont or buildings? Uh, I would say it's probably around 25 or 30. I haven't counted them lately. That's but, really good. Uh, yeah. And uh, we, have, um, uh, we have a great example, which is the uh, uh, scenery housing uh, in Milton, which is an excellent uh, example. It won uh, an award from the uh, National Passive House uh, Institute, and the, the Passive House uh, Institute US. And, uh, and we have architects that, as you saw, are building uh, net positive buildings right across the, the border here from uh, the, in West Lebanon. That building is a great example of what can be done. And, and all these, uh, I mean, are, are affordable and, and they are also a great uh, uh, investment opportunity for institutional investors as well as for uh, pension uh, uh, um, funds and, and all those things. So it's 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 a really I mean it's it's a gener it's a net positive uh, dollar generating business. So it's uh, because uh, the maintenance is considerably reduced, the operational cost is considerably reduced. So the the overall uh, uh, ownership cost is much lower than any building. All the buildings that are built uh, according to code here, they have very serious problems uh, in, in terms of maintenance, in terms of health, uh, uh, in terms of comfort. These are very important uh, aspects that really, uh, produce, uh, that really produce an environment that is productive for the occupants. And right. that's, uh, that's a very important thing. Right. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your time. And I'm going to make sure this is recorded. So we will be getting it out to the credit unions and so that they can review it at their leisure. And um, again, we really thank you for this information. No, well, we appreciate very much the opportunity and we are here uh, at your request whenever you need some information on that. So we'll be happy to work with you on that. Okay.